Hello everyone, welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on white noise. Please note, in my previous video, I have discussed about the different sources and types of noise in communication systems. That video will be a prerequisite for this video. So, I highly recommend you to watch that video first before you continue with this one. You can watch that video by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of the same in the video description below. Coming to the topic of this discussion, let us start the discussion by first asking what is white noise? A random process whose power spectral density is constant and hence independent of frequency is called white noise. So, in simple words, a random process with power spectral density as constant can be considered to be white noise. Now, when we say the power spectral density is constant, this simply means that all of the frequency components in the white noise contribute equally to the noise power. Therefore, the double sided power spectral density of white noise with a sample function denoted by small w of t is given by s w of f equals n naught divided by 2 watts per hertz. Please note this is a constant value. Figure 1 here shows the power spectral density of white noise. And as you can see, the PST is spread over frequency range from minus infinity to plus infinity. Moving on, let us now try to find the available noise power due to the white noise. The available noise power due to white noise is given by P equals N naught into B, where B is the bandwidth in hertz of the device that is used to measure the power. Also, you should note the available noise power of the thermal noise source can be given by P A equals K T B. Please note, this equation is derived in my previous video when I was discussing the thermal noise. You can watch that video by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now. Coming back, let us now compare equations 2 and 3 and thereby obtain an expression for the power spectral density of the white noise. Here I have written the RHSs of the equations 2 and 3 respectively, which is N naught B equals K T B. If I eliminate B from both RHS as well as LHS, what I get is N naught equals K T. Now I will divide both the RHS and LHS by 2. So N naught divided by 2 equals K T. That is, the power spectral density of white noise, which is previously derived as N0 by 2, is also equal to K capital T divided by 2, where K is the Boltzmann constant and capital T is the temperature in degree Kelvin. Moving on, it should be noted that the noisiness of the noise source is often measured in terms of the equivalent noise temperature. So, what is equivalent noise temperature? The definition is given in this point. Equivalent noise temperature is defined as the temperature at which a noisy resistor has to be maintained such that by connecting the resistor to the input of a noiseless version of the system, it produces the same available noise power at the output of the system as that produced by all of the sources of noise in the actual system. To understand this better, let me consider a simple system. And this system produces a certain amount of noise. Now, if I replace this system by a noiseless system, if I now connect a resistor to this noiseless system, such that the noise produced at the output is exactly the same as when the system was noisy, then the temperature at which this noisy resistor is maintained is called as equivalent noise temperature. Let us go back to equation 3. 
please note equation 3 represents the available noise power of a thermal noise source. Now, let us replace the value of T in equation 3 by Te, where Te represents the equivalent noise temperature. Then, Te can be given as available noise power Pa divided by K, which is the Boltzmann constant, multiplied by B, which is the bandwidth of the equipment used to measure the noise power. In a similar fashion, if I go back to equation 4, you see I have expressed equation 4, which is the PSD in terms of K and T. I am going to once again replace T in equation 4 by Te. This is shown here. So, the power spectral density of the white noise can also be expressed in terms of equivalent noise temperature as K Te divided by 2. Let us now move on and find the autocorrelation function of the white noise process. To do that, let us recall the property which is the power spectral density and autocorrelation function are Fourier transform pairs. That is, if I apply Fourier transform on autocorrelation, I obtain power spectral density and vice versa. Therefore, I will write the equation for the autocorrelation function which is represented by Rw of tau as integral minus infinity to plus infinity Sw of f exponential of plus j2 pi f tau df. Let us substitute for Sw of f which is the power spectral density of white noise and this is equal to n0 by 2 which is given here. So, the autocorrelation function is equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity n0 by 2 exponential of j2 pi f tau df. Now, since n0 by 2 is constant, I will take it outside the integration and we know that integration of exponential of j2 pi f tau over the limits minus infinity to plus infinity is equal to delta of tau. Therefore, the autocorrelation function of white noise process is given by n0 divided by 2 into delta of tau. From this equation, we understand that the autocorrelation function of a white noise is a delta function occurring at tau equal to 0 and the value of the function itself is equal to n0 divided by 2. This is shown in figure 2 here. So, if you look at it very carefully, the autocorrelation function is a delta function at tau equal to 0. The strength of this impulse at tau equal to 0 is equal to n0 by 2. Lastly, let us now make a list of observations from this autocorrelation function of the white noise. If you look at the value of the impulse here, this is given by n0 by 2 into delta of tau. So, I can say that Rw of tau is equal to 0 for tau not equal to 0. So, this equation indicates that any two samples of white noise process that are separated by a value of tau, but tau not equal to 0 must be uncorrelated. I repeat, since the value of the autocorrelation function is 0 for tau not equal to 0, any two samples of the autocorrelation process that are separated by tau, where tau is not equal to 0, must be uncorrelated. Any two samples that are uncorrelated can be said to be independent of each other. That is, the samples of the autocorrelation function of the white noise separated by a value of tau not equal to 0 are uncorrelated as well as independent of each other. Coming back to the PSD of the white noise, you should note that the range of frequencies here is between minus infinity to plus infinity. Therefore, the average power of the white noise process is infinity. However, in practical cases, such PSDs do not physically exist. In practical systems, as long as the bandwidth of the noise process at the input of the system 
is appreciably larger than the bandwidth of the system itself and the PSD is flat over the complete pass band of the system. Such a noise process at the input of the system can be modeled as white noise. To give you an illustration of how a white noise sounds, let us assume that if white noise is used to drive a loudspeaker, it always sounds the same. Well, with that we come to the end of this discussion on white noise. In my next video, I will discuss the effects of passing a white noise through an ideal low pass filter. So, stay tuned. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.